Well, with those Monday and Tuesdays in the past, we can get back to business here on a, a sunny, a really nice weather day, Wednesday afternoon, of course, here at Gulfstream Park on this live edition of Gulfstream Today. Acacia Courtney, Jason Blute alongside, and just thinking and doing the math, Three weeks remain. I mean, we are jump-starting the third to final week of the season. Just so crazy to think about it that this championship meet will soon be wrapping up. And, of course, highlighted by the ExpressBet.com Florida Derby, which we'll all be looking forward to. Really seeing that Kentucky Derby scene take shape. And it's always just a fantastic weekend. And uh, lots of good storylines leading up for the next couple of weeks. Including Hall of Famer Javier Castellano, who, along with Johnny V, it feels like in the modern era, more or less, say the last decade, decade and change, feels like those two Hall Hall of Famers have had more or less a stranglehold on the Florida Derby. One of the reasons, of course, trainer Todd Pletcher and Javier in the news picking mm -hmm. up the mount on Hidden Scroll. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and, 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 you know, no surprise there seeing how well Javier really knows this track and knows the way, his way around the Florida Derby, of course. But um, it's been a really fruitful race for Triple Crown races as well, not just the Kentucky mm. Derby. Of course, we've seen horses go on to win the Kentucky Derby after taking the Florida Derby, but any of the Triple Crown races. So perfect prep and a perfect time for it in the season. All right, so let's get down to crunch time here. It's an 11 race card on this uh, Wednesday, March the 13th. We are indeed fast and firm. Couple of highlights today. Three, if you include a gargantuan $1.25 million plus jackpot rainbow six carryover. The one thing, though, that really <laughs> jumped <laughs> off the page, or maybe it was because of you <laughs> Uh, the absence was the fact that Arad Ortiz is serving a suspension mm -hmm. now and Luis Saez, that may open up the door <laughs> for him to get on his usual three, four win afternoons here as we head down again to the uh, last few days of this uh, championship season. Yeah, Arad certainly took advantage of that when Luis Saez was on a suspension a few weeks ago, moving into that leading rider spot, but Luis Saez our leading rider last year and the year before will try to take advantage <laughs> of that. A good note there, and uh, because of daylight savings time, we do have a later post time, which Feels like feels like we're starting so late today, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> it does. Still very much, I think, we're all adjusting to it. I'm not just uh, insinuating losing that one hour of sleep. I just <laughs> think it's it just a little tough to grasp what time it is. But we can sh assure you we set sail a little after 1.15 p.m. And with that comes that gigantic, beginning in race number six, $1.3 million jackpot Rainbow Six carryover, which will have a lot of fresh money bet into <laughs> the pool. Oh, we can absolutely expect that. 11 races on today's card. There's 10 tomorrow and Friday. So do take note always as to where that Rainbow Six does start. It begins in race number six today. We do offer you a couple of pick fives, a couple of pick fours, and the super high five starting in race one. Any race with seven or more runners. So a little later than usual, or what's been the uh, norm in the, of recent times here at Gulfstream Park, comes your early pick five at about 120, give or take here. And uh, a big scratch, to be fair, of Heidi Ho in the first. Really big scratch. She was one I had actually considered singling in Instead, I'm just going to hang my hat on the number seven. A bit of mischief for Anthony Cordarolo, who had a tough outside post last time out, but has some speed. Four to five very early in the wagering. But just looking around at what she's going to face, this is a significantly easier spot today. I'm using two horses in race number two. Um, hopefully, Pagiti can get the wheels back on today. In the third race, going three deep in there. I think Portal going to be a short price off of that last race, but it's just been a long time since he's seen the winner's circle. So using three for a little bit of coverage. Pretty competitive made in 20 in the fourth there with three horses. And then we wrap things up with a nice um, 16 claimer, five on the turf. Uh, Dragon Moon for Jason Service might be an interesting one. But I have a little bit of uh, interest in um, Sturgeon, who's been very good le recently and is picking up Tyler Gaffleon today. Yes, I have that horse in the mix as well. I noted with peace and love, peace and love, the rider changed to Tyler G. And a horse that may pull a good trip there, stalking and, and right up in that first flight. But anyway, first 
flight is really where it's at concerning <laughs> the early betting and probably the late betting as well for the uh, Wednesday opener. An older Philly mayor, two lifetime 16K claimer on the turf because although I had a bit of mischief, a third originally with Heidi Ho on top, the race unequivocally goes through this drop down speed horse by Into Mischief. That's my thinking here. I mean, she's just going to have race low in her favor. She got Chuck, she has Chuck Lopez in the saddle. You have to imagine he's going to send like he tried to last time with that outside post. She's got a little bit of a better spot in here today. Last few races have not been very pretty, but hopefully going into straight non winners of two will help her. And then you get the consistency in a horse who at least shouldn't be that far off your top pick in the two truly courageous who when it comes down to just running second behind an informed Jorge Navarro horse and Jojo's candy. I think this field right for her to come back and run well again. That's fair. She's kind of been one of those horses picking up a check recently. Hopefully she can recapture some of that strong form she showed towards the start of her career. All right. She's one for 12. Your top pick one for five as we get onto a field of five in race number two, which is an older Philly mare, two lifetime, 6250 claimer. And like you, outside of Pagiti off the uh, DNF and the Van Doff line, 63 days ago and the speedy is that magic the four i don't know where else to go here i'm with you and somebody's going to win this race and uh, get that non-winners of two condition and this was a horse pagiti that i had liked last time out i think we all did like this horse a little bit and uh and she took money as well a filly by bullet train they gave her some time maybe there were some issues last time out but it is good to see her back on the racetrack she hasn't raced since january 9th but maybe the speed of is that magic will just find her in the right spot she faced a good one in jordy's ready last time out yep they look like they're just potentially on a different level than the other four horses or three horses in this case in race number two. Third on the afternoon, let's stay at that one turn mile. Things do open up to an extent here. You and I see this race in a very similar light, but still it's far from to be fair a two horse race between. To be fair about that though, you've got in my humble estimation, you've got the three portal and the seven Oscar blues coming out of the same race here, beaten by the Dale Romans drop down Hollywood store, uh, star that is, who coincidentally is actually a full brother to the four Hollywood strike mm -hmm. who's in this race for Michael Matz. The more I looked around at this field though, I feel as though they both ran well in the context of that race and that field again to me is the best last out comparable race or level and field. I think that's definitely a better field than they're going to face today just to be plain and simple um, I do think that portal ran a really good race last time out beaten just by three quarters of a length for Ian Wilkes again it's just been a while since he's seen the winner circle my hope with Oscar Blues is that yes he ran well last time out that was off of a big layoff so I'm hoping we see a stronger effort from him second off the bench and Mike Matz does have that Hollywood strike dropping down into a claiming race found a stat didn't send it in not a big fan of the you know quote unquote negative stats but a barn 0 for 20 23 winless and 23 uh, starts there first time for a tag something to be at least a little concerned about with the horse who won't be a, uh, a big price there in that third race fourth meanwhile another five horse field and a, a scratch of the two Mrs. Chapman in this three year old Philly $20,000 maiden claimer that leaves us with a couple of horses trained by KO Kathleen O'Connell mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost uh, talking about her second time starter in hot Soki hot Saki who ran uh, 51 days ago quick little stat here and uh, needless to say this was not a surprise just looking up uh, second time starters on the dirt running and made in claiming company we know she does a great job with the stock that she has and placing her horses correctly and uh, there's a good chance that horse will run a bit better but perhaps will run against a firster for the level in the uh, and a teammate a stable mate of uh, hot Soki in the one stay salty who with Paco riding I got a feeling they're expecting this horse to just blast out of there so you don't like hot Soki I don't <laughs> but it's it's the you, using that stat is just it's about just discussing the race you it's know what fair. I mean it's fair yeah I'm with you and, and I I didn't use that one either I I thought it was a kind of average race from her though she did have a field with a couple of next out winners as far as stay salty does go she's got the inside post in her debut but um, I think I'm with you I think that the fact of Paco Lopez being in the saddle she's not going to be overlooked she won't be the longer price of the young couple entry mm -hmm. if you will despite the fact that she is a firster also this is just the type of race that looks like it, it's the perfect spot for a firster you've got Louis Sias on the five dance the day away for Daniel Sanner I thought that this one was a little bit interesting has some 
pretty solid works on the main track and seeing Louie up and sometimes yep. in races like this, mm -hmm. I know you're in the same thinking. You just see the presence of a, of a top jock and that's just kind of where you go. Yeah, going out for a very low profile barn who just doesn't start that many mm -hmm. horses here. I just don't feel as though, again, you got a chance to get Louie. You don't want to yep. put him on a complete dud. You want to put him on something that's live and has a chance. And in terms of just drawing this race up, whether you're with the one stay salty or even first out with the five dance the day away, it's a very modest looking field yeah. to be fair about it on paper for sure. Now, race number five is an older three lifetime $16,000 claimer. We may have to look no further than the number two Dragon Moon going out for a barn here. And keep in mind, there's three weeks left of a meet that's over four months long. And you're dealing with the trainer who's 30 for 67 this meet, batting 45%. And it does feel as time has gone on, Acacia, we've got the stat here, just meet specific to Gulfstream Park this winter feels like Jason service when it comes down to turf sprinters and it, it runs the spectrum but boy he's got more quality good looking turf sprinters than I think any other barn I can name and I love the slow-mo of just like the squad walking into the walking ring there and a great stat because it's so true you think of uh, this barn and they have so many just quality turf sprinters and seen there of course with Mike Dove who has a lot of horses with Jason and this one's been freshened since January 24th I thought it was a very good feel that he, mm -hmm. he comes out of um, Zig Zillion GQ cover, GQ cover up, just a, a really good group of forces that he's been facing. And though he's not perhaps one of those kind of typical Jason Service horses that you might see on paper, just really looked to me like the one to beat. Um, Diamond Mint has been right there. He ran in that same race, but we talked a little bit about Sturgeon. This one has the ability to show some speed. And I think Tyler Gaffleon will really fit this horse well. And he's in good form. And is. this is a field as you work your way through. Not everybody has stellar recent form to potentially work off of and uh, Sturgeon has that going for him along with a big rider change to one of our top riders here year round and we'll see what Tyler does I would imagine after winning Keeneland fall and Churchill fall he'll be going back to Keeneland. I believe that's the plan yes but uh, certainly seeing that momentum continue on through throughout the winter here and his home turf if you will in South Florida. Yeah no doubt a, a local boy done good native of uh, Davie Florida not too far here from Gulfstream Park as we take a little time out and speaking of being far from GP we'll cover a lot of tracks and a lot of ground in the Stronic Five and more on that after this quick break in fact on Gulfstream today. Whether you're at home or at the track, have a stake in the race when you bet with Express Bet. Sign up for an ExpressBet online betting account and receive up to a $500 sign-up bonus. About 45 minutes out, maybe a little longer than that, before we spring the latch of the Wednesday 1st. It's March 13th. Keisha and Jason with you from our clubhouse studios and another Friday, another weekend, not too far off in the in the future here. And that means we've got another $100,000 guarantee in the Stronic Five. That's right. That pool has been well over 100000 the last couple of weeks in the Stronic Five. It starts in Laurel Park, race nine. We have two races from Gulfstream in the sequence nine and ten. We also have two races from Golden Gate, five and six out there. Don't forget, you can always get your free pass performances at GulfstreamPark.com. And that low 12% takeout has really just been so appealing to so many betters. Absolutely. We're taking this Stronic 5 literally into a Friday happy hour <laughs> setting sail. I think that's the latest start time we've had I thus far so, at 5.07. Yeah. Again, uh, uh, putting the clocks ahead and, uh, and springing ahead. Daylight. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So uh, wrapping it up uh, about an hour and 20 minutes, give or take, from start to finish. But definitely get tied on for that. And, of course, of immediate concern because we're playing for big money today.
today is that $1.3 million carryover in the jackpot rainbow. A lot of money in that pool just to begin. And so I did have a $32.40 ticket today. Maybe there's a couple more races that you want to spread, but I did end up singling. I'm using three horses to start things off in the six, going three deep in seven and eight as well. And then in number nine, uh, race number nine, I just ended up singling Sky Run for Gilberto, Gilberto Zerpa. Just a really good race last time out. She has speed. She looks like she's going to control the pace in that field. And I just couldn't find anybody that I had a strong opinion on to beat her. Um, tough with scratches in the 10th. I've got Mary <coughs> Lee and me and Dana Grace, the horses that look to be in the strongest recent form. Mm -hmm. And then capping things off with three horses um, in another race impacted by a couple of scratches in the nightcap. We today. lost three clear, <laughs> legit favorites yes, as did. far as early, late scratches, if you will, between the one Heidi Ho in this upcoming first race. Helen mm -hmm. in the featured 10 for Victor Barboza looked like she'd be a very yes. short price. And uh, Super Mama mm -hmm. coming out of the uh, the last race. So the good and the bad. I mean, those were three, depending upon who you like, three potential singles or a mm -hmm. horse. One of those three you could build off of. But with them out, the race has become that much more difficult. And thus the, uh, the potential for a good payoff uh, definitely exists. And I think increases in that in that department. So race number six, though, is actually it stayed intact. We have no scratches in this field of nine as we start the rainbow. And this race is almost the majority of the field. So I want to break it down into two groups, but the majority of the field, the numbers aren't equal. You've got basically almost everybody in here trying the turf for the first time, whereas the three, the exceptions, and they look good, don't get me wrong, the three come on Venezuela, who we both have third, and the five over leveraged, easily have the best looking turf for him. That was kind of my thinking in here, and the, the biggest question with come on Venezuela is that he's just been knocking on the door. He's been close, but hasn't been able to get the job done in his last few starts, and I presume that could be said by over leveraged and Linda Wright it's a great job. Some of the horses that have come down for the championship meet have been really well bet and have not really produced yep. this winter. Mm -hmm. But uh, she has had a winner. They added the blinkers, dropped in for uh, the, the tag for the first time last time out. Just a lot of changes for this cult, or this gelding, excuse me, by Fedbez. So I'm hoping that this one can take a step forward and does have Louis Sias up. Now, a couple of stalls to the outside will be perhaps the wise guy mm -hmm. horse in this race. There's got a little bit of a, a potential sneaky turf flavor and flair going with the number seven sovereign warrior who hasn't really picked up his feet to be fair and two starts off the claim for Oscar Gonzalez but the twirling candy mm -hmm. Giants Causeway Dam and I know you like looking at the pedigrees as much mm -hmm. as I do I'm sure it wasn't lost on you there's been three siblings to try the turf two, two of one yeah two winners yeah and I actually like twirling candies on I the grass too. I don't mind them at all so um, I, I'm with you there certainly on the bottom side looks like he could take the turf the last dirt races were not too good so maybe Dude. something's got to change and this just might be it. All right, hoping Tyler has a, a big day. Certainly gets on a run in the middle of this card as the late pick five begins in race number seven on a fast and firm March 13th. Older Philly Mayor, three lifetime claimers. I feel as though I've got my bases mm -hmm. covered, Acacia, in this opening leg. Uh, Tuesday's Rose, the three is the speed. Jordy's Ready is the sharp informed horse who's ar arguably the horse to beat. And the seven Cotton Tuya, uh, once trained by the, the late great Jerry Bazo, is the drop down in the race. So three very different horses on paper, but three horses that must be on this ticket that I am to buy the rest of the way. A uh, fairly competitive eighth race. The hang up with that is I use the Deuce Twisted Licorice and the Six Quick Connect. I'm a little worried they just fizzle each other into the <laughs> ground. It seems like all the good horses in that race bring speed to the party. That really does seem to be the case. I mean, you look at them, and even Astro Empire, who's trying the turf for the first time, could be really quick, too. I mean, sometimes you look at a race like that, and you feel like everybody's going to send, and then nobody does. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, Sky Run may just send, and it's going to be close, I think, in the uh, role for favoritism. I do feel as though the seven rolling Bobby might be a slightly shorter price there for Vitaly off a, uh, a faster figure than the others have been running on the dirt. And without any super mama in the uh, nightcap, I am 8-12. I am respecting Jorge Delgado in mid-pack. And it might be slight, but Brendan Walsh may ultimately have the horse to beat with the 12U people, don't you think? I was That's been my top pick all along, even before the scratch of, of uh, Super Mama. And you know that's a horse I've just liked the name. Mm -hmm. But um, I actually thought that this was going to be the right spot for that horse today. And the good news with her... Um, 
the silver lining because her price, you people, is going to so be. She's not going to be a price anymore. Yeah, <laughs> cut in half from whatever <laughs> nope. she was going to be. She, at least she moves in, what, yeah. three stalls there because right. there's three scratches so in the body so of the field. Outside. So perhaps a little good uh, with maybe the not so good there. But in regards to the seventh race for older fillies and mares, and these are three lifetime 6250 claimers, you and I both taking different horses towards the outside. This is my, my faith in Kathleen, a little mm -hmm. Paco here, and a horse who I think they're just saying, let's get a win with the seven. Big drop on Cotton to you. Very big drop. It looks like the right spot. She also faced good company last time out with my big Italian friend, uh, our, one of our uh, fan favorites mm -hmm. here, winning. And hello, Juliet, coming back to win as well. I did take Jordy's ready just based off her consistency. She's been in very good form lately. Let's move on to race number eight. A lot of speed signed on. Could mm -hmm. be a scorching, searing pace in this one. And that might be a bit of a dilemma when you're looking at, like we are, very logical and chalky kind of 2 6, six two exacta in this three-year-old 20K claimer. It's hard for me to argue, though, even if the pace is on the fast side, just how good the two twisted licorice was last time out. And here's the proof exactly three weeks ago here for trainer David Fox and Tyler Gaffleone. Yeah, perhaps a combination of this horse, this cult by Twirling Candy, finally landing in the right field. But he buried a group, and he did it very impressively. Yes, he did. And his only other turf races prior had been against the notch tougher, and a couple notches tougher, in fact, and showed that speed. He has shown the ability to be a little bit off the pace before. His best races and his most potent races, I think, have been when he's showing the speed. So that's going to be the biggest test for him today. But he has shown before he, he's not necessarily always been on the lead. Now the fuzzy in the race who's got proven form or at least mm -hmm. exposed form on the dirt and thus won't be a price at all is the six quick connect who uh, not too familiar with the stallion retrieve but I did like seeing the put it back influence mm -hmm. with him and he's out of an elusive quality dam even though he never tried turf during his career. And that's certainly fine there. Did have a sibling that won on the turf as well and he has the benefit of being two for two. He hasn't been beaten. They actually tried to get him on the turf last time and it was taken off of the grass and he was able to, to get the win that day from the rail. But um, first time turfers with those that won last time out for Jeremiah Englehart, 0 for 9. So a little bit of a question here about what we're going to get. An unraced dam there, turf trying sibs, 1 mm -hmm. for 2 in a very blue collar uh, family. Let's move on to race number 9. We may look at another really hot pace as we get back to the dirt with a field of 7 at 7 furlongs. He's a 3 year old Philly, 12 5 claimers. And Skyrun in my top pick, the number 7 rolling Bobby, they look similar on paper. They're going to be very comparable prices, but Skyrun is uh, coming out of a tough loss here on February 3rd. To me, not only does this filly make a lot of sense, she's also one of a couple, at least three key contenders. She's got to stretch out. The better-looking horses, Acacia, I think, are all sprinters in this upcoming ninth race, and all of them are basically unknown quantities going a very demanding seven furlongs. It's a really good point to make. It looks sometimes on paper, oh, they're still sprinting six and seven furlongs. It's basically the same thing. And it is not mm -hmm. at all. Um, she was beaten uh, by just a nose last time out. I thought it was a very game and tenacious performance from her. Learn story on the inside was s even more game and still amazed that she got the win photo that day. I remember watching it trackside and you really couldn't tell. And she's the Dominican the Republic. Dominican yeah, yeah, Philly. Yeah. And we believe the first horse bred in the Dominican Republic to win in North America, mm -hmm. which is a little, it's cool. little little footnote there for sure. But Sky Run looks good. The uh, top connections from Venezuela. But the seven rolling Bobby arguably is coming out of as good an effort, if not a little better, because it came up a little faster. And I've just... I got no knocks on her just running mm -hmm. back for 12-5. No, I don't either. She comes back at, a, a, I think, a pretty comparable level to what she faced last time. That wasn't the toughest open 16 claimer mm. that she comes out of. She, too, has to stretch out to the 7. She trains over at Gulfstream Park West. Um, she's uh, been claimed by Marcus Vitale, now second off the claim with these these connections. And 7 is a, a question mark, too, for the one Awesome Hills, mm -hmm. who's probably going to be third choice there for Ralph and, uh, and Louie from the inside post. Three top contenders, all trying 7 in race number nine. Last dirt race on the card coming up. Three-year-old Phillies here in uh, Wednesday's 10th, a $50,000 optional claimer and our second mega to be fair, marquee scratch on the program in the four Helen. I'm not sure what they do in terms of uh, betting in this race, whether they <laughs> make a horse coming out because four of the five in here are coming out of the Queen Martha. Mm -hmm. Now Midtown Rose and Smoke and Deb who won two were just eons better with again with all due respect to the other uh, four horses that are coming out of that race but Dana Grace 
is arguably the horse to beat now because although she kind of clunked up for third, I think her last two dirt races have obviously a big step, have been a big step in the right direction. I think so, too. She ran solidly last time out going seven furlongs. Her win uh, came here at Gulfstream going seven eighths. She clearly didn't want any part of two turns on the turf. I hope that she's a little bit more forwardly placed because it looked like Helen was going to be the main speed contender in here. Maybe that opens up the door for Hill Valley, or in my opinion, I thought it opened up the door for Mary Lee and me, who wired the field, I know for 20, two starts back, but that was going a mile. She's been in solid form. She was off slow last time out, I think taken out of her comfort zone. So maybe this is just going to be the spot. And Antonio sano has been on a roll lately. He, he has been on a roll, and this is the kind of horse that he may catch you sleeping yeah. with. You're not going to get caught napping today. But uh, <laughs> yeah, she it was, surprised. I think it was National Nap Day the other day, though, well, Monday or something I like can, that. That's a, that's a day. I think they're all dopey, but that's one <laughs> that, that one I could give up. Yeah, I, no <laughs> doubt about that. Shacklett, meanwhile, the only one in that field of five not coming out of the uh, Martha Rose. And she may have some speed as well. And those special weights mm -hmm. took her a while to finally get that maiden diploma. But yeah. I would argue there's going to be some people saying, look, she has consistently faced the best horses. Yeah, she absolutely has. And she won sprinting going six furlongs. But she's won very well at the mile before. All right, let's wrap it up. Race 11, again, a field of nine, three scratches in the body, including what figured to be a very short price favorite in the Wednesday night cap and the three super mama i originally had your top pick that you like a lot 12 you people or the 12 you people mm -hmm. in the uh, second spot but uh you get a you get the feeling not only is this a much easier race with no super mama it's go time today and for the maiden 20. it is it's a little bit of a drop in class she's third off the layoff i thought that she actually ran much better than it looks on paper in her first race off the bench um saw a little bit of improvement from her last time but you can see she popped the gate beforehand and that was also her first time with blinker so it just looks like this is going to be the right spot as we said earlier you're not going to get a price mm -hmm. on her like we might have been hoping um and then what you're left with is mambo dance are going out for Jose Ortiz in a very good barn who's been uh, batting at a high percentage with Jorge Delgado. But here's the catch 22 with her and I agree with mm -hmm. all that and I obviously think she's going to run great today and used her in the late pick five. This is a former Todd Pletcher horse yep. who burned a truckload <laughs> of dough with Mr. Todd. Oh she absolutely did it's, and she's still 0 for 7. They've been trying to get her to the winner's circle. She doesn't drop off that last race but she's really going to have to run better. All right as we of course don't drop we go up in class the one and only Pete Aiello voice here here at Gulfstream Park, standing by with those Wednesday scratches and changes. The best chance for success begins with a solid foundation. At Hardacre Farm, early personal one-on-one -on -one care starts the journey to becoming a champion. Bred to leading stallions, our mares represent the highest standards. Hardacre Farm's signature in the breeding industry. Based in Ocala, Florida, breeder and owner Amy Tarrant has inspired excellence throughout her entire career. In your quest for success, start with Hardacre Farm. Breeding the champions of tomorrow.